everybody, here's my little vintage fan. I'll turn it on for you. And now it's on. And here's the oscillation switch, which I'm not going to try and show you guys. And here's the switch that turns it on and off. Here's the oil hole. Here is the, the side of the thing. And I'll actually turn it off and show you the blades. Here's it spinning down. And the blades are... It's a nice turquoise color. The blades are metal. If you spin them a bit, they are metal. And the rotator switch is also metal. And it almost looks like an exhaust fan. I'll pick it up. It's got a very simple little thing at the bottom of it. Now I'll turn it back on again. Now, if you listen, at first, it sounds like a vintage, it sounds like an exhaust fan, but then if you turn it off, there's a little bit of a charm to these old things. These things are pretty cool, if you ask me. They're really nice little fans, and honestly, the metal and them probably shows how good things used to be back in the day. I would have a plastic fan to compare it to, but my plastic fan is broken. And this, although it's not a GE fan, it is a nice little fan though. And it does move a good amount of air. It really, it really does. It's really good with air. And if I could show you the oscillation feature, which I don't want to mess up the video again. If I could show the oscillation feature, it's a very simple little oscillator. But it's still a nice thing to have on this vintage piece of equipment. Oop. And the blades, as you see, are just a thin sheet of metal, like the old exhaust fans had. Now, some people have heater fans, and I'm like, why do you guys have these? And this fan is a really nice representation of what things looked like back in the day and how, th how much things have changed nowadays seeing all these holes in things. There's not really much stuff that's like that anymore. And the metal bullet-shaped... Um, I don't know what you would call that. And it even has its original little badge that it's an Eskimo fan. I cannot think of any other, any other sillier brand than that. An Eskimo is actually something, is actually an actual thing. It's a, it has... I don't know where they come from. I just I'm just rambling on because that's what most people do on YouTube. Most people just talk about the relationship and things like that to other things that this fan would make sense about. It's actually a nice little table or desk fan. 
that you could, honestly, you could probably stick it on a little computer desk if you wanted to. Where the where the idea of people putting plastic in fans came from, I have no idea. But this these things are really nice because they're all metal. No, they aren't the safest, I can tell you that, but they don't really have to be too safe as long as you're more careful with them. You don't really need to have this, these tiny little grill spaces. As long as you're, as long as you know how to be safe with one of these metal bladed fans, you don't really need small space grills. And besides, this is probably going to have a lot more air come out of it because it's got such much bigger slots in between and the fan blade is allowed to spin faster than the junky plastic ones. And these things probably even without oil, could probably last years. I don't know. I love metal blades, though. Tell you... Tells you one thing about the age of this thing. This thing is really old. And I don't just let this thing sit around. I actually use it. Because these things are reliable. They they don't they don't break down like a plastic fan. If you would compare this to a plastic desk fan, the plastic desk fan would probably be a heck of a lot more junkier and cheaper. And it would not have this nice switch that almost looks like something off of a vintage desk lamp. Let's hear that motor whir up again one more time. Because I love that. It is a little noisy, but... I've kind of come to expect that. That's <clears throat> just the the noise just means that it's working. Before this thing had an awful squeaking sound, and apparently I I remedied that pretty fast by just activating the oscillator real quick, and then uh, and. Uh, running the fan for a little, for a few minutes, or for like a second or two, and then the squeaking finally went away. I still would recommend when you get one of these home, put some kind of oil in this hole. Because that's what these are designed for. But this is surprising. This thing was stuck when I got it home. It wouldn't spin at all, and I got it to spin, I got it to actually work. I resuscitated this silly thing, this thing. And its grill is reminiscent of an exhaust fan. How funny. Some exhaust fans probably have the exact same design. Even the cord is super old. It's like, in the, it looks like a vintage lamp cord. Even this, this oscillator arm is very unique. Even this little piece makes no sense what it's doing. There. It spins. That little piece spins there. What that's intended for, I have no idea. But, if we turn it on, and actually watch the blade spin up, this is really where the fan comes, where the fan shines. This is really good. This is a really good little fan. 
I think it's... I think even though it's vintage, I think this thing has some... some really cool quirks. Quirks that no other piece of equipment has. For one, being all metal means that this is going to last years. I bet when I'm a grandpa, I'll still have this thing and be like, look, look at my old, look at my however many year vintage fan that I've got that I got at a yard sale. This thing is quite an impressive little fan. It's really nice, too. It really doesn't look half bad. <clears throat> One more turn on just to end off the video. Let's show it actually running because I didn't show it running for a little while. Let's just run it until it gets to 12 minutes because I know people probably want to see that. Okay, well. See you in the next fan video. Bye. Oh, I think it's a two-speed fan. Well, I didn't realize that, but whatever. I think that's about it. Okay. Bye.